Clint Beecher got to the state championship game only to come up by a hair short. Today in East Lansing, the perfectly perfect Buccaneers look to put the Raps on an unbeaten season and with their first state title since 87 as they take on Traverse City St. Francis in the Class C championship game here on Fox Sports Detroit. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome inside the Breslin Center. I'm John Keating with former Clarkston basketball legend Tim McCormick. Flint Beecher is unbeaten this season. They're looking to finish their season as an unbeaten team. They've been number one all year. They wear the expectations of a number one team, but it really doesn't seem to be affecting them much. All that matters is putting up a banner. Remember last year, this Flint Beecher team felt like they were the best in the state and lost in the semis in overtime. And they want to raise that banner again. I think they've got the talent to do it. Let's talk of banner. So much of basketball history at Flint Beecher. And they've created a culture now. We're just getting here and finishing second. It's really not given any consideration. When you go into the gym, uh, there are about 18 to 20 state championship banners on the, on the wall. You don't, we don't put up second place. We don't put up final four. We don't put up district or regional banners. Only state championships. And you know, every day when you come to practice, you gotta look at them. And, and you have to know that is the goal. The Buccaneers are led by the Class C Player of the Year in Monte Morris. He is known to his teammates as Man Man. <laughs> How appropriate because Morris is the man, a point guard phenom, only a junior, complete floor game, and an understanding of how to make his teammates better. His coach, Mike Williams, said, go out there and be a playmaker. 18 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists versus school draft. He is all about running, and running that potent Flint Beecher offense. Trevor City has some championship su success on their resume, but all of it's been on the football field. They've never played for a state basketball championship until today, and they're led by one of the premier big men in the state of Michigan. Sean Sheldon is an absolute stud in the low post. An incredible performer at 6'9", loaded with skill. He'll be going to William & Mary in the Colonial next year, but his immediate goal is a state championship in Class C today. Dominant in the semis against Shelby, 16 points. 12 rebounds when the team was not doing a good job in the second half. He is among the most dominant big men in all of Michigan high school basketball. All the expectations for basketball at Traverse City St. Francis changed markedly when they hired former Charlevoix legend Keith Askey to coach their kids. A year later, they're playing for it all. We'll tip it off between Flint Beecher and Traverse City St. Francis in a moment here on Fox Sports Detroit. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports and respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect for all those involved in the game. MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals are brought to you by Art Van Furniture, Michigan's number one furniture and mattress retailer. Becoming a champion requires many elements. It takes serious skill. It takes split-second decision-making. And it takes leadership. But all champions share one quality they have no control over. A dash of good luck. Today, on a campus synonymous with green, a champion will be crowned. And the teams that possess these championship qualities will find their pot of gold. The 2012 MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals begin now on Fox Sports Detroit.
The head coach of Traverse City St. Francis, Keith Haskey, in his second year, took upon this challenge and basically had to sort of rebuild the culture there. We got a group of kids that, number one, believe they, they can be state champions because we watch, even if they're not on the football team, they sit and watch our football team go to the state championship almost every year. This year we lost in the semifinals. So we know if we put the work in, if we play together as a team, we've got a chance to do that. And, uh, you know, there's some schools in the state that culture isn't there. So to walk into that culture made it a lot easier for me. And now let's meet the starting lineup for today's game between the Glads of Traverse City St. Francis High School. And the Bucks of Flint Beecher High School. For the Glads at forward, 6'2", senior number five, Nick Clear. For the Bucks, at forward 6'2", senior number 10, Cortez Robinson. The other forward for Traverse City St. Francis, 6'9", senior 31, Sean Sheldon. For the Bucks, at forward 6'4", junior 23, Markel Lucas. Center for the clan, 6'6", junior, 3, Cody Kleinrichter. For Flint Beecher, at center, 6'4", senior, 33, Jaquarius French. Guard for the Glads, 5'11", senior, number 11, Devin Sheehy. For Beecher, at guard, 6'3", junior, 11, Monte Morris. The other guard for the Glad, 6' sophomore, 21, Byron Bullock. And for Beecher at guard, 5'9", senior, 20, Antoine Burks. Head coach, Traverse City St. Francis High School, Keith Haskey. Head coach, Flint Beecher High School, Mike Williams. Officials today, Kendall Smith, Michael Rubelar, and Flint Beecher is 27-0. 28th win, obviously, will get them the Class C Championship. They're first in a good long while. Traverse City St. Francis try to play spoilers, and. Keith Haskey telling us a short time ago that their, their kids are loose because he believes that the Buccaneers are the ones who are wearing all the pressure. Keith Haskey, a guy who was 240 and 77 in 13 years at Charlevoix, which just happens to be in the same league as Trapper City St. Francis, changed jobs and changed the fortunes of Gladiator basketball. You may think this is going to be a battle of tempo, not so fast. St. Francis not afraid to run against anybody. Devin Sheehy, he'll take a three. The front iron no. There is Antoine Burks. Oh, is he terrific in their semifinal win. Inside it goes to Jaquarius French. On Sheldon, the first one to the basketball. Looks like Sheldon got swiped across the face on the rebound. Very much an inside outside offense for the Gladiators. Iron Bullet, inside it goes to Nick Clear. And you'd expect both of these teams, with a fair amount of football success behind them, will be on the floor a lot today. Keith Haskey said their number one priority is to get touches for Sean Sheldon. Not necessarily always as the primary scorer, but he's such a good passer, he can facilitate offense. Monte Morris running the offense for the Buccaneers against Sheldon. What that for a matchup? Over Sean. We've got to clear, and here comes Sheehy. 
Point guard against Postman. Sheldon up top. Inside it goes. And Antoine Burks comes away with the basketball. John, I can promise you this. If you turn the ball over against Beecher, you've got little chance. Their speed game is phenomenal. Superius French. It's saved to Byron Bullock. Part of the football play in Bullock family from Traverse City, St. Francis. Ball rolls off. Two shots are coming. It'll be Devin Sheehy stepping to the line. Flint Beecher brings the heat on defense. They are attack style, and there are opportunities to put the ball on the floor. Remember, they're getting out on the court. There may not be a lot of resistance in the paint. And when you look at the Bucks, not a big team. They don't block a ton of shots. The scoreboard has been officially cracked with the first free throw from Devin Sheehy. 5'11 senior. Averages 12 points a game. And he's got two in this one. Morris against Sheehy. A couple of 11s that have had very strong years. Monte Morris is a clinician. He understands the game, thinks his way through things. Very high basketball IQ. I get the sense they don't want him to have the ball. All kinds of, for lack of a better term, gimmick defenses will be used. Try to take Sheldon and Morris out of this game. Nice job by Jaquarius French inside. Ahead of the swipe attempt by Sean Sheldon. Stolen. And what? Monte Morris, so quick. And remember, only a junior. Monte Morris can do whatever you want from him. He's a star at both ends of the court. As an example, when he was in eighth grade, averaged about 30 points per game, and then the next year he's on varsity, loaded with scores. He became a facilitator first, so he's capable of so many different facets. See, he breaks the, the press, but the Buccaneers do force a turnover. Works. Inside to Robinson. Morris on a wing for three. Got it. Here's that three-quarter court pressure that the Buccaneers use and use very well. Clear. Offensive foul. A lot of open shots for Flint Beecher. Why? Well, when you have multiple weapons on the offensive end, it provides an extremely difficult challenge because who do you focus on with this Buccaneers team? They're all weapons on the offensive end. Monte Morris will find them. And as you mentioned, what a performance in the semifinals by Antoine Burks. Two quick fouls for Nick Cleary. He has to come out of the game. Ian Spencer. Pick him up off the gladiator bench. Robinson off glass, yes. Two, two, one zone press, effectively. Sheehy, an extra bit of a hop. Six turnovers already for the gladiators in this game. Beecher looks to add to an eight-point lead early. Burks against Spencer. It's Byron Bullock who has drawn the assignment of defending Monte Morris. Burks for three. Yes! We saw a three-point clinic from Southfield Christian in the Class D title game. Could see more of the same from Flint Beecher in this one. Bullock, got it. Byron Bullock, the first field goal of the game for the Gladiators. Undefeated, 27-0. They want a state cha championship, and with a victory, it would be the best record in school history. 
Burks wins the race to the loose ball. Working against Michael Jenkins, who has come off the bench. And over Jenkins, Burks can't get his three ball to go. And here comes Sheldon, a bit out of control, and another turnover. Aquarius French on the front end, got it. Flint Beecher does not mess around. There's the double team. Pull up for three. In and out. Rebound to Markel Lucas. See, you might focus on the offense. They play this junkyard dog style defense, and it feeds right into their confidence on the offensive end. I, I think it's a dangerous thing to try to run with Flint Beecher. Sheldon. Into the paint. Jenkins. Got it. There's three to play in the first quarter. And now St. Francis just trying to hang around. Monte Morris with a high basketball IQ. His coach told us basically he decides what's working and what should be called. And that one worked again. Inside it goes to Sheldon. Fouled on his way to the basket. And Sean will shoot a couple. The thing that makes Sean Sheldon so unique is that at six foot nine, he has an incredible frame, the ability to make a 15 foot jump shot, nice little jump hook in the low post. And throughout his career, I've always felt like he has the potential to play in the Big Ten. And he wanted to play immediately, feeling like if, if he went into the Big Ten, would probably have to sit for a couple years. He's going to William and Mary, and not only is he an outstanding player, he wants to be a podiatrist. <laughs> because it runs in the family. We'll get more into that story as our, our afternoon goes on here. Now some slapping of the glass. Here comes Traverse City, St. Francis. Devin Sheehy. He'll take a long two. Morris leaves it for a teammate. Burks <laughs> wins the race. What? To the ball, end of the basket. What a delivery. Another tap away. Front end. Got it. Oh, my. Emmanuel Pfeiffer with some sauce. 21 to 7. They've hit buckets from inside and from outside as well. And it's been all Bucktown here in the early going. Hey, you. Hey. What's this? It's a scale model of the Santa Maria. It's your new hobby. Better get cracking. Actually, we were gonna get cracking on a bunch of HD movies on demand. Then why do we get U-verse? Yeah, do you really think my old phone wires are gonna have as many on-demand choices as Comcast? Yes. Well, think again, Captain Fish Stick. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go take a nap. U-verse's old phone wires can't handle what Comcast can't. Visit Comcast Can to learn more. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. I shop Spartan stores for their great service. Dutler Family Foods is my Spartan store. Riverside Market is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. Seven Beecher over Traverse City St. Francis. You know, Meyer is a proud partner of the Michigan High School. And Athletic coming out of a timeout, it would appear that we have another one. 141 left in the first quarter, and it's been exactly the kind of start that Flint Beecher wanted, and exactly the kind of start that Traverse City St. Francis feared. And Mike Williams was one of those guys who really felt like the early going had to be determined by the discipline they were able to exhibit. Their defense first, and Mike Williams is a disciple of what Tom Izzo preaches. Rebound, defend, 
and run the transition game. And from a couple of footstones, Mo Keat, Mateen Cleaves, Antonio Smith, they, they have really taken to what Tom Izzo preaches on the defensive end, and it works very well. So far, Traverse City St. Francis has eight turnovers, and that has powered a 6-0 advantage on the break. 15 points already off of turnovers for Flynn Beecher. And Mike Williams was telling us a short time ago that Roy Marble, who is something of a basketball legend in Flint, went on to have a great collegiate career and played some of the pros, called every member of the team just to wish them well and tell them what the expectations of each player was going into the championship game. Let's take a peek at how each team made their way here. Flint Beecher with wins over River Rouge and Schoolcraft. And Traverse City got past Nagani and Shelby to make their way to the Breslin Center. And the first chance to play ever in a state championship game for the Glads. Flint Beecher last won a state championship in 1987. This team is trying to duplicate what happened two spring times before that where they went absolutely perfect all season and finished that off with a Class B state championship. They've dropped down a class and they're going for a state title yet again after having come up just short, getting knocked out of the semis in each of the last two years. Last year by McBain, a loss that has sort of hung around Mike Williams' program. Mike Williams pulled Monte Morris aside after last year's game. Yet yeah, they thought they were the best team in the state. And he told Morris, you've got to be a playmaker. There are times when you make the right plays. You know, somebody's opening, you get them the ball. There are other times when you say, I am the man out there and I'm taking over the game. That's what he's looking for from his junior star. Austin Curry has entered the game for the Gladiators. Devin Sheehy's running the offense for Traverse City St. Francis to Sheldon inside. Loose ball is put back up and in. Curry, who has just popped into the game, getting a big bucket for Traverse City St. Francis as they look to answer the onslaught. But Jaquarius French was left lonesome, and his teammates found him. They cannot trade baskets. But we're seeing Flint Beecher. a lot of different defenses in this game. Full court, three-quarter court, run and jump, man-to-man -man half court. Deep defensive playbooks. Why? Because these teams are really aggressive and so athletic. It might be a good trip to try to get a post touch for Sean Sheldon. Montana Gooch has entered the game for the Buccaneers. There's Sean Sheldon, but that's not a post touch. Near the arc, out of bounds to Flint Beecher. All state in Class C is Sean Sheldon, six feet nine inches, a basketball player. Bullock forces a turnover. Sheehy to clear. Jenkins, no. Clear will rebound. And the Buccaneers come away with it again. Montana Gooch. Eric Cooper has entered the game for the Bucks. One shot opportunity for Flint Beecher. French blocked by Sheldon. Sheehy pushing the pace. Skip pass, clear, short. Here come the Bucks. Spin, block, block. Gladiator basketball. Quarter ends with not a shot being launched. And we're a quarter of the way through the Class C championship. Flint Beecher leads Traverse City St. Francis 23 to 9. We're glad you're along with us. What a day of basketball this is annual in East Lansing and will continue from the Breslin Center on Fox Sports Detroit. Spartan.
Keith Askey wearing sort of a half smile in the huddle as if to tell his guys, all right, just settle down. We're going to be okay. And in the state of Michigan, you don't just go north. Everybody goes up north, they say. And we'll take you up north to the campus of Traverse City, St. Francis, a school established way back in 1887. And the school has won six state titles in football. The most recent one, 2009. Kids are required to participate in senior service projects to establish relationships with someone they don't know and spend time with them and practice exercises in charity and selflessness. And it's that sense of teamwork that leads to basketball success as well. And they need some teamwork right now. 52% Flint Beecher, six have already scored. But once again, post touch, Sean Sheldon. He's an excellent passer. This reminds me a lot of our first game. Size does not work if you don't get the ball inside. Stolen and then stolen right back. Inside it goes. Eric Cooper, rebound Sheldon. I think we saw in the last possession, Monte Morris has such a great wingspan. He's guarding Sheldon by his lonesome. And continues to do so. Cortez Robinson, also part of the defensive approach for the Buccaneers against Sheldon. Speed kills. And, and as I look at the stat sheet, St. Francis, nine turnovers, only one assist. Sheldon earned a foul. Robinson and Morris working in tandem against him. Montana Gooch with his second personal. Martel, Martel Lucas has entered the game. Sheldon just a little bit short there. And here comes Beecher. Into a double team. Great pass, great look up court. French has it tipped away from him. Morris, off the back iron, no. Sheehy pushing the picks. Bulla couldn't get the second foot to stop and dragged it. Well, Bulla's a name that, that we're all familiar with. Brother Max, the middle linebacker for the Spartans here on the East Lansing campus of Michigan State. Dad Shane. Five-second call. So there's some of the defensive intensity that St. Francis is looking for as they try to climb back into this one, down by 14 in the second quarter. As Traverse City St. Francis takes the ball out of bounds in their quarterfinal win versus Nagani, three of their former star players showed up to to give a message about what Traverse City basketball is all about. Big key for their success. Robinson, great move around the basket. There's Damon Sheehy, Devin's brother. Swarmed by Buccaneer defense. Devin Sheehy to Sheldon. Great look, great pass. Sheldon, Devin Sheehy. Paces quickening up. Three ball. Got it. Antoine Burks. Saved by Damon Sheehy. He'll shoot it and get the roll. A nice response by the Gladiators. Morris gets the roll. Yeah, normally, Traverse City St. Francis, they play fast about 70 miles an hour. They, they have care of being forced to play about 90 miles, and it's just not their comfort zone so far when you look at their turnovers. Cody Klein Richard gets the inside bucket. Man Man. Monte Morris has been known as Man Man. Call that by family members, and it is absolutely stuck. Inside work to carry his French over Sheldon and in. 
Yeah. What a start. French has eight points and all kinds of quality work on the offensive boards. Fuller for three. And Francis just needs to get one of those long shots to go. Oh, my! Morris from behind the basket. Twists and gets it to go. As I search for a word to describe Flint Beecher, how about exciting? End-to-end -end action behind the backboard, but don't lose sight of the fact this is a very fundamentally sound team, uh, especially on the defensive end. They play very fast, but they're in a stance. They talk very well. They show help when it's appropriate. I'm very impressed with what they're doing. This is the equivalent right now of a major league pitcher going out there and throwing about six shutout innings of no-hit basketball. They've got very quick hands, but they haven't drawn a lot of fouls. In fact, they've only got four fouls in the first half. Burks working out some kinks on a knee. Sheehy to Sheehy. Man to man all over the floor. Devin Sheehy, front iron no. And a play with such degree of poise. Led by the player of the year, Monte Morris. Rayvon French, so strong inside. Klein Richard is fouled. What we're seeing from the Gladiators on offense is they either turn it over or shoot a contest shot or they get a wide open shot because of the fact that Flint Beecher is attacking so much they're not afraid to give up an easy basket because they know they're going to force a bunch of offense at the other end by attacking. Sheldon way out top. Going to create some offense for some teammates. Try to get them going a little bit. Inside to Sean. Has to save it, but saves it right to a Buccaneer. And a foul is called on Austin Curry. St. Francis foul to Curry. Timeout on the floor. Under four minutes to play until halftime. Beecher running away from Traverse City St. Francis in the first half. Dad! What? What's up with the internet? I'll tell you what's up with the internet. I can't get it up to top speed because you're watching two HD TVs. I'm running out of bandwidth. Mom? Whoa. What's going on? Oh, I'm all clogged. What is it? Oh, I think it's you verse. Oh, no. I'm heading towards the light. Try turning off the TV. Uh, oh. oh, thank you. Oh, man. That was like trying to squeeze cabbage through a keyhole. You versus old phone wires can't handle what Comcast can. Visit Comcast Can to learn more. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. I shop Spartan stores for their great service. Glory Market is my Spartan store. Westland's Apple Market is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. The team that leads by 19 as we reach the second half of the second quarter here at the Breslin Center has been number one in the state all season long. So what, says Mike Williams. We were ranked number two all last year, so they, they kind of went through it before. But, you know, the one thing that we talked about was uh, in our past, we've knocked off number one teams, number two teams. So the rankings mean nothing. We never put any stock in it. We never paid it any attention. We never talked about it. Uh, we were thankful for it, but that's about it. In chatting with Mike Williams yesterday, getting to know some members of his team, there's some kids on his team that have been through a lot and talking in general terms about them. If we go out and we lose tomorrow, and this kid turns out to be successful in life, we've won. We have won. That is the message. He is ultimately a teacher first and a coach second, and a big part of what Clint Beecher is uh, trying to get done. Right now, they're trying to win a basketball game, which would create great delight in Bucktown. Mike Williams talked about the fact that basketball is an outlet and really emphasize that, that his players have overcome 
monumental challenges that would destroy you know, a lot of men. Yeah, the stories will hurt your heart. To try to try to create life stories out of some some tough situation and using basketball as a bit of a conduit for that. Monte Morris with a basketball out top he'll go to Cortez Robinson inside blocked by Sheldon. Sean with an outlook to Devin Sheehy. Damon Sheehy he'll take a three. Just not getting the shooting stroke going quite yet. On a lighter note, Coach Williams took his kids to the old country buffet for <laughs> dinner last night. Said they had a great time. One of my favorites, I'm sure yours too. Absolutely. Sheldon calling for the ball against Robinson. Sheehy to Sheldon. Got it off the glass and down. Seven points now for the Gladiators' big man. Spreading the floor. Uh, offensive. Tennis has entered the game. Sorry, Tim. Uh, offensively, I'm just impressed with the, the diversity. Five guys on the court, all capable of 20 points or more on a given game. You heard the ooh from the crowd at the Breslin Center on a great crossover from Morris, which set up a three. Klein Richard, yes. You can always say this about the crowd that gathers for the state championship games. They know their basketball. <laughs> yes. One of my favorite days of the year. Robinson. One iron, no. Pettis inside. In 1977, John, I started attending the Michigan High School State Championships, and I remember Beecher way back then. Same style, same pride in what they do. What were those games played? Chrysler Arena. Chrysler, sure. Okay, what are the chances of sticking the basketball at that angle <laughs> on the left side. A zillion to one. But the good news is there's plenty of guys in this game that can get up up the rim and get it. Well, if you could, if they couldn't, you could. So we'd send you out there. We have Tim McCormick on our team, so never be without a without a rock. A buck 20 to play until halftime now. A 20 point lead for the Buccaneers. Uh, you might be surprised at the low score, but Traverse City St. Francis, capable of fireworks, capable of comebacks. They average about 75 points per game on the season. Quick hands, takes it away from Sheldon. Uh, but that is typically against much less aggressive defense. In one of the games against Benzie Central, the Gladiators put up 104 points this season. It's just staggering. In a high school game. Absolutely. Saw from, from Southfield Christian. They have those that kind of offensive capability. Turnover. Here comes Sheehy. Trailer is clear. And there are no doubts about rebounds at that end of the floor. Eric Cooper. Against Bullock. Man Man spins out. Rebound to Sheldon. I'm thinking it would be perfect if Sean Sheldon's middle name, Oscar. SOS? SOS. <laughs> How do you know it's not? At the buzzer. Got it. Ahead of a glass slap. And the bucket counts. Shot fake. Yeah, you should be open for a shot. Oh, that's what they do. They turn defense into points. 
as quick as anybody in the basketball. And at the other end, the final points of the first half. Shannon Hogan's with a guy who has to be delighted, head coach Mike Williams. Shannon? Coach, great first half there. St. Francis definitely has some size, though. How important has it been that not only are you guys getting some baskets under the net, but also on the perimeter? Uh, it's been very important. We've been able to uh, spread out their defense and uh, make sure that we are running our offense well. We've been able to spread them out well. A very fast-paced game that you guys play. How have you worked that to your advantage this first half, and how do you plan on continuing to that in the it's just, second? It's just something that we do, we've done all year long. We like to get up and down the floor and uh, play uh, fast-paced basketball. All right, thanks so much, right, Coach. Thanks. Good luck. John, I'll send it back to you. Smile, Mike. Come on, you're up by 20 in the state championship game. Just a little bit of a grin. Still wearing his game faces. He and the Buccaneers retire to the locker room. Some work ahead for the Gladiators in the second half of the Class C championship game at Breslin. Sometimes it comes down to the last second buzzer beater. Sometimes you don't know if the ball's in or if it's out. But when it comes down to the final call. The refs are always there to keep it fair. And every high school athlete needs you to pitch in. If you want to become a referee, just go online to MHSAA.com, click on Officials, and register now. Our, Our game is counting on you. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. I shop Spartan stores for their great service. Dutler Family Foods is my Spartan store. Riverside Market is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. Flint Beecher has tried to do something they did 27 years ago. Go unbeaten during the course of the season and end that with a state championship. And they lead by 20 at the break. At the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about the fact that Traverse City St. Francis had a strength. And their strength was having the biggest guy in the building, perhaps, and a guy who had been coached by Tim McCormick once upon a time in Sean Sheldon, but that's been sort of mitigated by Flint Beecher. He is big and he's bad and he's talented, and he has been the lone bright spot. Traverse City St. Francis gets a block from Sean Sheldon. Nice finish around the basket, mid-range game, but his eight points have been negated by 13 turnovers. A Mike Williams team, man, they get after it on the defensive end, forcing turnovers. They get layup after layup, offensive rebounds. They shot 46%. They are plus 16 in the paint. And maybe most impressive is they're on pace for 82 points in this contest because their transition game is sterling silver. So it's Flint Beecher by 20, and the beginnings of a party have kind of popped up in the Bucktown cheering section, but we've got another half of basketball still to be played. When we come back, we'll take you to Bay City, and we'll have a fascinating story about a couple of brothers, one of whom plays basketball and will play at Michigan State in his future. That's next as we continue on Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back to Breslin for the Class C State Finals. We're going to take a look at actually Bay City Western last season. They made it all the way to the semifinals, but then, of course, they lost four of their starters and their sixth man. That had a lot of people wondering how far they could go this year. Well, they had two very special seniors. They're actually twin brothers, Matt and John Costello. Trevor Thompson caught up with them and has their story. It's fitting that Bay City Westerns Matt and John Costello are fraternal twins because although they both love playing basketball, there's nothing really identical about them. Matt's more goofy and out there in his personality and uh, John's just kind of, you know, quick-witted and sarcastic, so they're, they're a little bit different. And just like gunslingers facing off at high noon, each has chosen their weapon of choice as their life's passion. For Matt, it's the basketball. For John, it's the saxophone, an instrument he seems to have gravitated to almost naturally. Partially because of my grandpa, because we kind of presented it to me. Um, so I was always wanted to like follow in his footsteps because he played the saxophone too. So it's kind of like cool, I want to be like my grandpa. And also with Matt, he was always just the better athlete. Um, and I could never seem to beat him. So it's kind of like, well, I'm going to go play my saxophone, you go play basketball. Uh -huh. And it just kind of, we just kind of took our own little pass. That's a good thing too 
because when their paths cross on the basketball court, that natural competitive sibling rivalry that exists between brothers tends to come to life. Definitely. Yeah. Um, almost every day in practice we get on each other and I mean, it looks like we're trying to kill each other, but we're just playing. 18 years, just what's behind it. It's just, we just grown up, I mean, it's just been us two together, so everything we do is trying to compete each other, and I mean, compete for whose dad's gonna be proud of that day. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, in practice, it's just who, who can beat the other. So, I mean, we just go at it and have fun. I mean, afterward, we just drop it, but while we're in it, we're fighting. Last year, I, I could not have John cover Matt. I, I could not have them play against each other because it, it just got too ugly too fast. So, um, and, and this year I think they've grown a little bit. You know, they know that uh, college is coming. I think they've um, got a little tighter as brothers. So uh, uh, maybe they enjoy each other, respect each other a little more, you know, so it, it's been a little calmer this year. That's because this year is a special year, their senior year, a year in which sacrifices were made in the name of brotherly love. Matt did something pretty cool a couple months ago. He had quit band, you know, it's not his thing. Um, but he decided for his last trimester he's going to join band again so that he could play with John. So they said they really wanted to be together. And John would give up a shot at a football scholarship to focus on music, but he would play basketball for the chance to play one last season with his twin brother. It just meant a whole bunch because I knew he gave up football and that's something he loved to do. Um, now he kind of plays football when he plays basketball, but um, <laughs> it was just, it, it, it was really nice of him to come and play some basketball and it helps um, him being on the floor. I mean, I know he can't go all the time with his knees, but um, it helps him because we do know how to play well together and that makes our team better. Um, and, and I enjoy winning more than anything, so having him on the team helps us win. And when it comes to winning, Matt has just won the biggest individual prize there is for a high school hoopster, Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. But even that is a victory for the team. Without last year's team and this year's team, there's no way I could have got it. Um, I mean, even putting up spectacular numbers, is, you just wouldn't get it. Um, so Mr. Basketball, it's an award, but uh, it's not the goal. And while Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan is a way to rate Matt's talent on the basketball court, John's talent in music aren't quite as easy to measure. For the band I was in, the Allstate band, for the Barry sax, which is just one of seven saxophones, um, I was the first chair out of it, but there were six other altos that I know two of them could kick my butt. Um, and then there were two other tenors and two Barrys. So I mean, as a Barry sax player, I'm technically the best, but there's also other people that weren't in the band and didn't try out. So it's really hard to say who's the best. And apparently it's hard to discover who is best at their chosen passion. I think that's impossible to say because they're both so good at what they do that I think it's probably equal. So Matt Costello is all set to accept a full scholarship to play basketball at Michigan State under Tom Izzo. And although John is one of the best in the state at what he does, it's not yet been determined where his skills on the saxophone will take him. And that's because getting a music scholarship is just as challenging as getting one in athletics. He's auditioned for um, three of the four schools that he's been accepted for. U of M, MSU, Central Michigan, and Grand Valley. They all have saxophone professors that he wants to study under. So within the next two to four weeks, he's going to find out um, if he got into the professor's studio and any scholarship that might be available. And so then he has to make decisions from there. We're very proud of them. Uh, and, and not so much for the success that they've had, but for the people that they are. Both boys are going to step out of high school and go to college and it's only going to get tougher and they're not going to have the support system of home and they have to make good choices and they have to challenge themselves and so I'm proud of them of where they're at right now they've taken they have taken ownership of their lives um, and they need to continue doing that and as far as the family is concerned that is sweet music to the ears don't go away we'll be back with more from Breslin the Class C State Finals when we come back. Back at the Breslin Center, I'm sure Keith Haskey, the head coach of Traverse City St. Francis, has faced greater challenges than a 20-point deficit. But this is a good one. He's with Shannon. Shannon? Coach, in that first half, Beecher's defense was really all over you guys. What did you tell them in the locker room to maybe spark the offense here in the second? Well, a lot of it's just we got to put the ball in the hole. I thought we had some good looks from the three-point line. and. 
we were all for seven from the three-point line. I think we got to make some to maybe loosen up a little bit. Uh, our big kids seem to be real slow making moves. Sean's getting the ball inside, and instead of being quick, we're kind of holding it, let them drop down. So we got to loosen them up. We got to make some shots and uh, make a little run, just ship away a little bit at a time, hopefully get back in the game. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. John, I'll send it back to you. Shannon, thanks. 40 and 9 in two years at Traverse City St. Francis for Keith Haskey. And he told us before the game he really wanted Sean Sheldon to play fast. And we really haven't seen as much of that as the head coach wanted. Don't hesitate. And they've got to go right now. Burks got it. Antoine Burks, 25 points in the semi. Another big day today. Morris with 12, Burks with 10. Robinson with nine, two others with eight. It's balanced. Bullock! Byron Bullock, the sophomore. That's what the coach wanted. Their first three of the game. I like the fact that Keith Haskey said, we press, we trap, we're not going to change our character regardless. Robinson with a scoop, and in. It's your basket, Tim Robinson. Sheehy, clear, Sheldon. In and out. And here comes Antoine Burks. Foul is Cortez Robinson. Take a look at some numbers from the first half, and as you might imagine, they're a little lopsided. Well, 15 to 2 is really the big number. <laughs> it's a lot too large if you're Keith Askey. Uh, I want to take a second here to, to pay tribute to Cortez Robinson, linebacker in football, wants to play college basketball, and nobody's really going to focus on his performance out there when he's surrounded with outstanding scores, but his defensive job has been something to behold. He's, he's really making life difficult for Sean Sheldon. He's also boxing him out on the glass. Very underrated athlete. His mom is a foster mom, and Cortez assumes some of the responsibility, taking care of foster brothers and sisters. Big part of the family. Whistle, hold inside. And Traverse City St. Francis will keep it out of bounds. Aquarius French with his second foul. Baseline out of bounds is a thing that Mike Williams was really impressed. He said that St. Francis does a really nice job of executing on their baseline out of bounds sets. So much film work goes into a game like this, you don't have a chance to see these teams or see each other much. Different parts of the state of Michigan. Spread offense. Really good dribblers. Penetrators, kickers. Not a lot of structure in this offense. They don't need it. Monte Morris picks up his dribble, looks to create French against Sheldon. Great job using his body to shield Sheldon from the basketball and taking it up and over the gladiator big man. And, and that is a body. He, he's a low riser, but you saw the way he shielded the ball. Great delivery. That might be my new favorite phrase. He's a low riser. Not always a bad thing. Off the iron, no. Clear rebounds. Here come the Gladiators. Back the other way. Sheehy parallel to the floor. Earns a foul. And the Glads will keep it out of bounds. And Keith Haskey and the Traverse City St. Francis team went to Okemos High School this morning for a 9.45 shoot around to get their legs, to, to get in that feel-good zone. I can promise you this, none of the shots were taken under the duress that Flint Beecher brings on yeah. defense. In spite of the fact that Beecher was scoring at will for a while, it's, it's their defensive intensity that has been perhaps most impressive in this Class C championship. Bullis spins out of trouble. Sheehy for three. Morris. 
to Burks. Patiently waited for Bola to land and then put it back up over him. At times, has this resembled Flint Beecher in their pregame layup line? They've gotten so many open looks, most of them based off of great defense. Great heads up play by Jaquarius French on the ground. And before he could be tied up, he calls a timeout. And the lead that it was 20 at halftime has been stretched to 23 in the third quarter. Monte Morris was the story coming in and has been the story of the Class C championship game thus far. Tim. In the semifinals against Schoolcraft, thought the game 18 points, seven assists, all the highlight real stuff that you need. He's so fundamentally sound. And his coach Mike Williams told us before the game that the star players sometimes defer. They run the offense, they make the extra pass, and he feels like number 11 in white and red is so talented that he'd like to see him more aggressive and just take over games with his skill. I don't think that's in Monty's makeup. He wants to do the right thing and make his teammates better. When he was in the fourth grade, Monte Morris was playing with eighth grade kids on an AAU team and averaged almost 20 points a game as a fourth grader. Fourth He's a fourth grade. grader playing with eighth grade kids. And he said he was helped by playing with older kids. There's Bullock, who took one in the face and still drained the three. Well, maybe the only thing we need to say about Morris, he's a junior. This is his third trip to the state finals. He has yet to declare a collegiate choice. Plenty of interest, as you can imagine. Sheldon taken right back away by Burks. Boy, is Antoine something defensively. And a great no-look pass to French. That would be Mr. French to you. <laughs> Family, family oh, affair yeah. reference a long time ago. Buffy and Mr. Sissy. Prince, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I'm embarrassed for myself. There's only about 20% of our audience <laughs> that knows what you're talking about. Sheldon hits a three. Sheldon, three. And here come the Bucks. Burks off balance. Leans away. No ball. El ball and the Glads will get it back. They need it back. Three and a half to play in the third quarter. The Buccaneers romp continues in the second half. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. I shop Spartan stores for their great service. Glory Market is my Spartan store. Westland's Apple Market is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Well, you just heard John and Tim talking about Monte Morris, a very strong player for Flint Beecher, and he has a really close relationship with Coach Mike Williams. Actually, they have been very close for a number of years now. Take a listen to Coach Williams. Monte and I have had a relationship since I've been the coach at Beecher, and I've been coaching at Beecher 10 years. So I met him when he was a little boy, and we spent a lot of time together when he was a little boy, just playing one-on-one, -on -one, playing video games, um, doing different things. And then when we would come to team camp, coach, can I please come, you know? And so he came up here with us starting back when he was in the fourth grade, and he would come to team camp with us um, up here at Michigan State. And so he's been a part of the program since I got to Beecher. <laughs> And when Monty Morris went to the Michigan State team camp as a fourth grader, he went up to Tom Izzo and said, Coach Izzo, someday you're going to recruit me. Uh, truer words couldn't have been spoken. 
Sheldon with a tipper. I think Tom would be delighted to get him. That's up in the air right now. Cortez Robinson. And out of a scrum on the floor, another held ball. And this time the Bucks will keep it. And both of these teams, really good benches. As a matter of fact, Flint Beecher calls their second unit the white team. And when you have that kind of depth, you never have worries about injuries or foul trouble. Maybe the greatest benefit is that you have such competitive practices. I know that for Flint Beecher in some of their games this year, it was more competitive in their practices than it was going out against another team. The games at that point just become a scrimmage. You've already been tested in your own gym. Inbounds to Burks. Three left in the third. Markel Lucas. Here come the Gladiators. Sheehy on Burks. Looks inside to Sheldon. Nice look inside. Jenkins. It seems like every time St. Francis makes a run, there's an answer from Beecher. And Monte Morris is the answer man. The answer man man. man, man. Turn out, yeah. <laughs> a long three ball by Bullock. But he can really shoot it. What an athlete. I know he can hit people with his pedigree. From his hip, he launched that one up and in. A 14-point deficit. Can St. Francis cut this thing to single digits by the end of the third quarter? If so, he's got a ball game. A 10-2 gladiator run here in the third. Sheehy to the rack, got it. It's a 12-2 run. And a timeout quickly called by Mike Williams. He doesn't like the looks of this one all of a sudden. What had been a lead more than 20 is now slashed to just a dozen with 2 or 6 to play in the third. Aspiring high school athletes and coaches are nurtured in sports as they grow in their knowledge and skills. The same expectation should be true for game officials. Unfortunately, some people expect officials to start out perfect and then get better. We need to keep the officiating rank strong, so be a good sport and support everyone in the game, players, coaches, and officials. To become a registered game official, go to MHSAA.com. We worked the girls' championships last weekend. Working the boys here today, the refereeing has been stellar. Very consistent, completely in charge, appropriate calls. People must be following your advice there on that last read that you had. Well, you know, and, and if we're not mentioning anything that's in, in any way controversial, that's a perfect day of officiating for these referees who have earned their way to referee in a state championship game. The Bucks have to call another timeout. A full timeout is called as they couldn't get the ball inbounds as the Gladiators have ramped up their defensive intensity mightily. Yeah. It's been Sean Sheldon sort of giving his team exactly the spark that was needed and exactly what you'd expect from one of the top players in the state. Sean Sheldon will play immediately in the Colonial next year. He's skilled, he's long. Runs the court, mid-range game, unquestionable. Provides toughness and leadership. And oh yeah, he's got some perimeter package as well. Sean Sheldon so far in this game has played hard throughout. Five out of seven from the field, and he's working on a big double-double. 12 points, 10 rebounds, and in the semifinals yesterday, sorry, two days ago, Sean had 16 and 12, and when the St. Francis offense wasn't working, he took over late, especially on the offensive glass. And you just saw him get involved in the huddle with head coach Keith Haskey. Adding some little wrinkle to the play that they're trying to create after they get the ball back. The Bucks will try to inbound it, and that's 
been more easily said than done all of a sudden the last two occasions. 12 point deficit say it may seem like a lot. Well, 23 to 9 at the end of the first. Then they had an 18 12 quarter. The Bucks have been dominating throughout this. We've got a ball game. Full court pressure now. Handled by Beecher this time. Lucas got it. And draws a foul. Blocking foul is called beneath the basket. And Martel Lucas will shoot a couple. Yeah, I think that he slid in late. And that's when guys get injured. I, I think that's an excellent call. He'll shoot one in an attempt to complete a three-point play. Can't get that one to go. Sheldon rebounds. And back comes Traverse City, St. Francis. Inside it goes. Sheldon, lefty hook. No. Rebound by the Buccaneers. Monte Morris. Calls another timeout. Hemmed in in the corner of the court. I so now only one timeout left for Beecher. I may be mistaken, John, but didn't it look like Beecher was having a lot more fun in the first half? Now, when you're running up and down the court at will, let's listen in as Keith Haskey talks to his glance. See sort of a calming presence of the veteran coach Keith Haskey, who had success at St. John's and Charlevoix, and now immediate success in his second year at Traverse City St. Francis. And this too we're anticipating seeing. And Keith Haskey is sixth trip to the semifinals. Two trips with the boys in Charlevoix, two trips to the semis, one trip with the girls, and today. Antoine Burks into the fourth court. Morris blocked by Sheldon. To the great dismay of the Bucktown faithful. Thought that might have been a goal tent. Gets up pretty good, doesn't it? He sure does. Got quick hops. Sheehy for three off glass. No. Sheldon rebounds. Can't get that one to fall. Been that kind of a day for the Gladiators. And Sean Sheldon. Slaps his own hands as if to say, come on! Well, I like the fact that he did it with his left hand and he kept it off the backboard so it stays in bounds. A lot of young guys will send the ball out of bounds and that's the one right there when Sean Sheldon is laying in bed tonight. We'll think back to the layup that could have easily been a three-point play. One shot. Made the first of two. Six foot nine inch, averaging 21 points a game. Made one of two. Burks, great crossover. Rims out. Rebound very, very nicely by Emmanuel Pfeiffer, who has entered the game. Skip pass, Jenkins to Bullock. To the rack, no. Rebound, Sheldon, yep. They don't enjoy the hoop too long against Flint Beecher. They change ends to end as quick as anybody in high school basketball. You're making a bucket, you're looking for somebody's hand to slap, and all of a sudden the action just whizzes past you. Emmanuel Pfeiffer will shoot a pair. 
<laughs> uh, Mike Williams calls Pfeiffer the puppy because he's so young, but he's still got some dog in him. <laughs> I, I really like the way this team plays, and Mike Williams feels like he's got two sets of starting guards. And made this comment. He seemed very proud. He said, we're the best team in Flint. Nobody can deny it because we played everybody in the city and beat them. Well, if you're the best team in Flint, most basketball seasons, you got a pretty good stake at being the best team in the state of Michigan. And that might be the case this year. Damon Sheehy to Sheldon. Back on defense is Pfeiffer. And final seconds of the third quarter now. A good teams end quarters well. Let's see what kind of shot they get. Off the glass, nope, Sheldon. The heave. No. So what was a 20-point game at halftime is now a 15-point game as we head in the direction of the fourth quarter at the Breslin Center to decide the Class C state champs in Michigan. I shop Spartan stores for their quality products. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. Rogers Foodland is my Spartan store. Market Fresh is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. Eight minutes of basketball still to be played for some of these kids. It will be the last eight minutes ever of high school basketball, a 15-point game. And let's take a look at the profile of Flint Beecher High School as we make our way up from East Lansing and over to Flint. The enrollment is just the north of 300. They have a program there called Making a Difference, which encourages men to be socially active in the community and academically successful, and that was founded mostly by Beecher grads who are giving back and raise it up an organization focused on promoting youth engagement expression and empowerment via the performing arts yeah flint is a tough city there's no denying that violence is everywhere and tragedy has hit this team throughout the year in many ways basketball is the easiest thing that they do fourth quarter underway sheldon up top to sheehy got it what a, what a turnaround in the second half. 36% for St. Francis first half, 52 in the second, and they're gaining confidence every minute. Sheldon at one end of the press, comes back at the other, and blocks the ball out of bounds. Nice little stat line by Sean Sheldon underway here. He's got 15 points. He's got 14 rebounds, three assists, and five block shots. And he goes to Montana Gooch. Monte Morris in and out. Now the Gladiators need to get something going. Sheehy is stripped of the ball. All the way to the basket is Markel Lucas. Sheldon got away with a bit of a step there. Can't hit. Full court pass, football pass, and fouled on Sheehy against Burks. His second for Devin. Both Sheehy men in the game right now, Damon and Devin. The mom actually lives in Phoenix. But she was a St. Francis grad and wanted her guys to be the recipient of the kind of education they receive at Traverse City St. Francis. And so the kids are living with dad and grandpa in the Traverse City area. And they only see mom 
two or three times a year, which is tough on everybody. I really like watching Antoine Burks play. Quarterback on the football team. Four-year starter, as coach Mike Williams said. He's as good as Morris, just not as big. Sheldon gets the two points right back. And the lead's back to 15. Gooch to Lucas, to Monte Morris, to Burks. Wow. Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Mike Williams said, I'll feel really bad because this is the last day I'll ever get to coach. My seniors, specifically Antoine, I can see why. Go to Waterford Community College on a scholarship. One of the top junior colleges in the country. Hurts going inside, but stolen away by Sheehy. They head to Bullock. Nice little bit of unselfishness there. But the Gladiators are in a position where they cannot be trading baskets. They need stops. Last year, game management versus McBain was an issue. They were up two with six seconds to go and lost in overtime. As we get down towards the end, Mike Williams is going to really emphasize decision-making with the ball. And if you look right now, St. Francis's players are all bending over, gasping for air, hands on knees. John, when you see a player with his hands on the knees, it's a sign that they are winded. Quick hops for Markel Lucas, and he'll head to the free throw line. And he's one of those kids who had sort of a, a tough stretch October 16th. His father was killed. His dad had moved him from Detroit. He had played at Detroit Consortium. But his dad wanted to play at Flint Beecher, and then tragically, his dad was the victim of a gunshot back in October. And Markel's one of those guys who's had the arms of the program embrace him. Uh, to take it a step further, Mike Williams played college ball with his father. Oh, everybody in the program has a heavy heart. Sheehy directing some traffic. Try to get a pick from clear against Gooch. Sheldon for three. Blocked. Cortez Robinson did it nicely. Burks on the run. Follow-up. Yes. Montana Gooch. Five minutes left in the ball game. Stolen away. Cortez Robinson have a day. Before the shot, no basket. Foul is called. And Cortez Robinson will shoot some free throws. Out of bounds. Take, check that. He'll take it out of bounds. Nobody, I repeat, nobody turns miscues into points at the other end quicker than Flint Beecher. To me, this team plays like a champion. They defend. They're unselfish. They're very well coached. The lead is again 18. Spread the floor. Gooch will back it up. It was 20 at halftime. The 18-point lead. The Buccaneers withstood a little run from the Gladiators. Cross court to Robinson. Inside picked off. And no bullet will take it and can hit it. Forced it inside to Sheldon, but he got fouled by Cortez Kenneth, or uh, Cortez Robinson. That's just the first on Robinson. What a marvelous job of defending one of the best players in the state in Sean Sheldon. And we're halfway through the fourth quarter before he draws his first personal. Full frontal, and because of the ball pressure, St. Francis doesn't have the ability to pass over the top. Quick three from Bullock. 
But how does he get that rebound? Morris went up in traffic with the big guys at 6'3", he's a point guard, but he's got very long arms. Long arms and quick hops. Duke spins away from Sheehy. Sheldon. Bullock spins. From that kind of a day. Sheldon rebounds, up and in. Well, they're happy to have the ball in the hands of that man. Monte Morris. Player of the year in Class C. When Monte Morris, Monte Morris was a freshman playing on varsity against Buena Vista. One of his first games, 29 points on only 14 shots as a freshman. And he's only a junior. It looks like he's leading his team to someplace very, very special at the end of his junior season. We'll continue for the Breslin Center in a moment here on Fox Sports Detroit. Hey, you. Hey. What's this? It's a scale model of the Santa Maria. It's your new hobby. Better get cracking. Actually, we were going to get cracking on a bunch of HD movies on demand. Then why do we get U-verse? Yeah. You really think my old phone wires are going to have as many on-demand choices as Comcast? Yes. Well, think again, Captain Fish Stick. I'm out of here. I'm going to go take a nap. U-verse's old phone wires can't handle what Comcast can. Visit Comcast Can to learn more. I shop Spartan stores for their great deals. I shop Spartan stores for their great service. Dutler Family Foods is my Spartan store. Riverside Market is my Spartan store. Visit TurnToSpartan.com for valuable coupon savings. Shop smart, shop Spartan. Flint Beecher has four players already in double figures, led by Monte Morris. It seems that they're closing in on something very, very unique. Here's Monte Morris on what a state title would mean to him. It'll mean a lot. It'll just mean that uh, we put in all the work and it's paid off. You know, it'll just mean that we done been up. And, we had our ups and downs and everything, but we stuck together as a family and just was able to win it. In 1976, they were 27 and 0. In 1985, they were 27 and 0. Today, they could go 28 and 0 and complete the greatest year in a prolific and impressive history for Flint, Flint Beecher. 27 years after they did it last, on the edge of a perfect season. And they've had some really good athletes here, haven't they, John? Carl Banks, the Michigan State player who had a great NFL career. Courtney Hawkins, now the athletic director at Flint Beecher. Chris Gray. It's a long list. Ian Spencer has entered the game and turns it over. Under three to play. Layups and dunks. That's all they want right now. Easy jumper there from Man Man. And they don't let up. Get pass, Jenkins, off balance, off glass, and in. And you'd expect them to burn some clock, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not who they are. They attack for 32 straight minutes. There's more attacking right there. And Morris adds to his total. With surgical precision. What a player Monte Morris is. Help mightily by Antoine Burks. Bullock rebounds his own miss. The Glads will keep it. They just have not had an answer for the speed and intensity and flat out skill of Flint Beecher. Sheldon is fouled on his way to the basket. MHSAA.TV will have live streaming coverage of the post-game press conference from this contest. Plus, you'll find an archive of all of this weekend's championship games. Get bonus coverage of the basketball finals at MHSAA.TV. 
as Sean Sheldon is a load down the low post. And the fast pace has not allowed him to go inside and play with his back to the basket. Now, to his credit, he is so good to get 20 points and 17 rebounds in a game that's not really suited for a big man. Shows you his value and skill level. You mentioned earlier that he wants to be a foot doctor, wants to be a podiatrist. Well, he wants to take over the family's business. His uncle is a podiatrist in the Traverse City area. Hey, he may be playing basketball a little bit longer than he expects. Nice alley to Sheldon's oop. Timeout quickly called. But with the shoulders, Sean Sheldon can pack another 25 pounds on with no problem. It is interesting to note that so many of these kids have NBA aspirations, at least dreams of playing in the NBA. Sheldon might be one of those guys who's somewhat realistic. You know, he'd like to go to a very good college, and he will in William and Mary. But then he said he'd like to play basketball in Europe after he graduates. Maybe expand his horizons a little bit before he resettles back in the state of Michigan. Rock solid numbers for Sean Sheldon on his way to college in Virginia. And the last chance that Keith Haskey will have to coach his kids this season with a buck 24 to play in the Class C championship game. All of high school coaches never stop coaching, right? They still see in the hallway. Tuck your shirt in, young man. What kind of grades did you get this quarter? Don't you think those are the life lessons Absolutely. That, that, uh, Absolutely. that stay with you? You know, the, the, the kids don't like the fact that they they have to go six days a week and the extra time running up and down hills and in the weight room. Go a little bit harder, try a little harder every single day. Was there a coach you absolutely hated when you were a high school kid and now you look back at and you say, that's a guy who helped shape the person, the man I turned out to be. Do you want me to say I hated my high school coach? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you disliked him on certain no, days. No, absolutely not. <laughs> you questioned his I, rationale I a time my, or two. I, I liked my high school coach, absolutely. I can't get you to bite at all. Seventy-two to fifty-seven. The broadcast of this game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and Fox Sports Detroit. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the images, descriptions, or accounts of this game may take place without express written consent. Uh, I say this with unequivocal certainty: Flint Beecher is the best team in Class C. Twenty-eight and zero, number one all year long. They are so well conditioned, and the turning point for this season actually happened last summer, or earlier this year, when they went to a scrimmage at Lansing Eastern. They played Lansing Eastern and Muskegon Heights and Ottawa Hills, and when they walked away, they knew that they were really good and could compete with anybody. And they're not just winning. They're winning decisively over another of the best teams in the state. Aquarius French with the first of two. Uh, when French goes to the line, he's he's a powerful guy. 6'4, about 250. All-state football player going on. He can play some defensive end and tight end. He's got a running back for them as well. The fridge. Absolutely. Right up the middle with that power game. You know what he, he also does is he takes charges. Mentioned the, the, the low rising defense that taking a charge is better than blocking a shot because you're guaranteed to get the ball back and you put fouls on the other team. Sheldon to Bullock from his hip pocket note. One minute to play. Morris handling the pressure with ease and Gooch is fouled by Sheehy. That's four on Devin. And some bench emptying begins 
Riley Corcoran comes into the game for Traverse City St. Francis. Big hugs, big smiles. Monte Morris with the coaching staff. How much work they put in. We talked about it just a few moments ago. And all that work is leading to these moments right here. Hugs for everybody. And one big one for head coach Mike Williams. And he'll be back. Oh, yeah. Only a junior. Three trips already to the Final Four. Finally gets that championship. And uh, when, when you look at the way he plays and the returners, you'd have to say there's a pretty good chance he's going back to back in four out of four. Gooch with free throws. And we'll give some love to the Gladiators who have entered the game. We mentioned Corcoran. Just bombed away a three. Austin Curry has entered the game. Mark Stein has entered the game. Riley O'Neill has entered the game. Gooch hangs out of the basketball. Running one-hander. Mark Stein with a rebound. One member of the Gladiators, Jared Brown, applauded as he played defense in that possession, knowing that the party is about to begin. And it will. It wasn't in doubt for long in this one. Lynn Beecher just sort of exerted their will against Traverse City St. Francis, withstood a bit of a spurt from the Gladiators, and then won in fine fashion by 14, 74 to 60. Mike Williams has done it. He's returned Flint Beecher to the top spot of the state of Michigan at the Class C level, going wire to wire. Unbeaten are the Buccaneers. 28 and 0, and the 28th gives them a championship. This time, we direct your attention to center court where Fred Smith. Athletic Director, Buchanan High School, and Jason Melema, Superintendent, Piwama Westphalia Schools, both members of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Representative Council, with the assistance today of Bailey Truesdell from Grand Blank High School, a member of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Student Advisory Council, and they will make the awards presentations. First, let us honor our finalist in Class C, the Glads of Traverse City St. Francis High School. First, we will present the individual medals. Number two, Austin Curry. Four, Eon Spencer. Number 10, three-point Riley Corcoran. Number 20, Kyle White. Number 22, Riley O'Neill.
25, Damon Sheehy. Thirty two, Michael Jenkins. Thirty four, Connor Archer. Forty four, Mark Stein. Number three, Cody Klein Richard. Five, Nick Clear. Number eleven, Devin Sheehy. Twenty one, Byron Bulla. Thirty one, Sean Sheldon. And accepting a finalist trophy in Class C, Coach Keith Haskey. Congratulations to the Glads of Traverse City St. Francis High School on an outstanding season. And now for the 2012 Michigan High School Athletic Association Class C champions, the Bucks of Flint Beecher High School. First, we will award the medals. Number three, Montana Gooch. Twelve, Eric Cooper. Fifteen, Deron Glover. Twenty-four, Jalen Pettis. Twenty-five, Emmanuel Pfeiffer. 30, Gerard Brown. 32, Darjan Mickle. 34, Cortez Wright. 44, Brandon Garcia. 10, Cortez Robinson. 11, Monte Morris. 20 Antoine Burks 23 Markel Lucas 33 Jaquarius French the championship trophy in Class C, Coach Mike Williams. Congratulations to the Bucks of Flint Beecher High School, the 2012 Class C Boys Basketball Champions.
The MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals have been brought to you by Art Van Furniture, Michigan's number one furniture and mattress retailer. They led early, and they led big, and they end up winning it by 14. Final thoughts from Tim McCormick? I thought the diversity was the key for Flint Beecher. They did everything well. Their transition game was phenomenal. In the paint, they scored 50 points. They dominated at stretches on the defensive end and turned those into points. John, I'm really impressed with Mike Williams and his coaching and how many weapons he has on the offensive end. Do you think you could wrangle a party invitation to one of the parties about to break out in Bucktown tonight? There's going to be a big party, and I think you and I deserve an invitation. 28-0 go the Buccaneers and one of the most historic athletic programs in the state of Michigan has been returned to its pedestal looking down upon the rest of the masses in Class C. For Tim McCormick and Shannon Hogan, I'm John Keating. With a final score in the Class C title game, the Buccaneers of Flint Beach are 74, the Glads of Traverse City St. Francis 60. You've been watching the MHSAA Basketball Finals on Fox Sports Detroit. So long for now from the Breslin Center here in East Lansing.